I'm coming out on signing day. Um, Coach Locks is going to start with an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. First of all, thanks for coming. Um, you know, we felt like our football family got stronger today, as with most programs uh, on signing day. You know, I'm thrilled with the quality of the young men we were able to recruit. Uh, when we took over this, this, this job, it was a priority for us to build on a, t a really good team. We thought we already had a strong foundation of current players, but we needed to build on it, and we think we've been able to do that with this recruiting class. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Uh, what a tremendous job by the staff. You know, we started out a, a lot later than most people, but we were able to make up a lot of ground um, over the course of the last three weeks in between hiring coaches and then also finishing up this 2019 class. So I've got to give my uh, staff a, a great deal of uh, – accolades for their, their hard work and effort. Um, we were able to keep a great deal of the DMV talent that we talk about here in this class is represented. I think we have seven kids uh, represented in the class thus far. This is an ongoing recruiting process for us. Uh, you know, we hope we're not done yet. We still have a few slots left. Uh, and, and with the way the transfer portal and uh, the postgraduates things work, uh, recruiting for us will be ongoing as we continue to build on this class. Um, we are able to go out and get players in other areas. I think the Maryland brand is a national brand. Of course, we're going to start by starting here, right here in the DMV, but we will use our connections and ties to the other places we've been. And we've been able to go down into Georgia. We were able to get down into Louisiana. We were able to get down into Florida, as well as Ohio, and, and some really uh, fruitful recruiting areas to fill out this class. And again, we're excited about it. Um, we were able to meet specific needs. That's what this class was for me uh, coming in, to meet the specific needs that we had to feel. Uh, we feel good about the foundation that this class provides for us. Uh, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the DMV uh, in particular has become a hotbed and a very uh, fruitful area for, for recruiting, especially in the football uh, area. Prince George's County, right here where we're located, has produced a great number of big time players uh, over the years and we continue to see that trend and there's no doubt we have to be uh, very aggressive in this area we've got to do a good job identifying those players as early as we possibly can and uh, make it cool to be a Terp again. Can you talk about the quarterback that you brought in from Louisiana and how long you've been on him and what his best attributes are? Yeah, you know, we were, able, we were fortunate to be able to sign Lance Lejeune. Um, he was a guy that we had recruited and started recruiting uh, at Alabama. His name was on our board for quite some time, very familiar with him. Um, our recruiting process for him here at Maryland started about probably two weeks ago. Um, I actually found out that he was still available um, with the ties that we had down in Louisiana from my time at Alabama. We were able to make some specific connections to Lance. I think he and I started uh, trading text messages while he was on a visit at another place. And uh, we flew down last week, went and saw him, uh, myself and Coach Montgomery, and we were able to get he and his mom up this weekend for an official visit. And um, just like what happens to most people, when they get here on this campus, they see the vision, you see the investment that administration's made with the facilities that we're building, and then the opportunity. You know, that's the one great thing we had to offer was an opportunity uh, with the new staff coming in to have the opportunity to come in and compete. And uh, Lance is a competitive player. Uh, if you look at him, he's one of the dual threat guys that has the ability to beat you with his arm and his feet. Uh, we feel he'll be a great addition to the quarterback room, which already has some pretty talented players as well. Coach, you talked a bit about your time in Alabama. What lessons do you, do you learn recruiting there that uh, have really helped you out as far as uh, the last month or so? 
Well, I think the big thing is the evaluation process. You know, so much is made and put on rankings and stars, and, and, and those are all things that are placed on kids by other people. For us, we wanted to be very specific and do a really good job in the evaluation of the guys we signed, and we feel really strongly that the guys we signed in this class have the ability and they fit the characteristics that we were looking for to build on our team, which again, I, I feel really good about the team we have coming back. We feel like these 17 individuals will add to it. And I thought our staff did a great job in the evaluation process. You know, when we came in as to who the best available were, what our needs were, and then being able to evaluate who the best available were for us. And uh, we feel like we hit home runs on, on the guys that we signed. We feel like they met and fit, fit the evaluation that we wanted position by position. And that's how we were able to build this class. Can you describe the, the level of emotion? We all, we all saw it on that Twitter video that, that you guys released about when you signed Lance and why such emotion? And where does he fit, up, fit in? in the quarterback room and train. Well, it's a, shame that, it's a shame they only show the video of Lance, but those emotions are rolling all morning long. Uh, you know, obviously getting a quarterback of Lance's caliber uh, this late in the game uh, and, and with the hard work, and it was a team effort. I mean, you know, when he and his mom came up this weekend, our whole staff surrounded them. We were able to show them what being a Maryland football player, being a part of our Maryland football family was all about. And so, but those are the same emotions we showed with all 17 of those guys. You know, anytime you're able to go convince kids to come to Maryland and show them what a great opportunity this place presents, both academically and athletically, uh, you know, we're excited. Um, but that emotion was shown all throughout the morning with every signee. Uh, Mike, What's uh, up? how you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, Four defensive backs in, the, in, this, in this class. Was that a priority for you to, to fill out that particular position? No doubt about it. Uh, you know, we, we had some needs there. Obviously, the offensive line with some of the guys that have graduated here were big needs. Uh, we had to go out and get us a couple of pass rushers, which we felt we were able to do. And, and those were the priority positions for us, obviously. Uh, bringing in a quarterback in this class uh, with where our quarterback room is uh, was important as well. So. Again, we were able to meet the needs that we had. We were able to go get the players to fill you know, the slots. Uh, we had position slots and position needs, and we felt like we hit, hit on all those. Thanks, Coach. Uh, you mentioned it, you touched on it in your uh, opening statement, but coming in, in in January after your time at Alabama was over, you had a shorter period to work in, and you mentioned it with your staff a little bit, with how, how they were able to help, but how much of a challenge was uh, filling out this class in a shorter time period since December and now? Well, the good thing is is that we came in and the, the short period we had with the four coaches I hired before I left to go back to Alabama, uh, we built the structure of our recruiting office, which they were able to build the board. I mean, the whole thing to recruiting is making sure you know who the best available players are. And so though we didn't have full-time coaches on board, we had a recruiting staff that was working behind the scenes while I was at uh, Alabama finishing up my job there. And, and I got to get great credit to those guys, Marcus Berry, Dave Mincarini, uh, Taylor Edwards, Will Christofferson, all those guys who stayed here and stayed back were able to put together a great board for us. So the only thing we had to do as a staff when we got in was go through that board, watch the video, make the evaluations, and then start the contact. Coach, uh, you mentioned transfers earlier. Do you think uh, being active in the transfer market is something you guys emphasize a little bit more this year because of the timing of the transition? No doubt about it. You know, with the obviously the grad transfer market as well as the transfer portal, um, everyone, I think, in recruiting at, at this level will have to utilize that, that, that market or that niche in, in terms of recruiting. And so, again, you're able to get uh, a player that has some experience in those uh, two, different, uh, two different niches, uh, the grad transfer as well as the transfer guy. But at the same token, you're not a guy that you have to invest four years in as well. Mike, everyone knows about your recruiting prowess in Maryland and Florida, but you know you got LeJondre here at the end, um, offered Devonta Lee, you have some younger kids recently offered from Louisiana. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about you down there. How did you kind of get your foothold um, in Louisiana and how did that kind of come about? I think the big thing is when you're in the SEC where I just came from, I mean, uh, 
Louisiana is an area that has a ton of players and uh, really good football down there. So um, for me, because of my ties at Alabama and obviously Coach Saban having spent time there, we're able to develop relationships. You know, the top receiver, one of the top receivers at Alabama, Devontae Smith, was from Louisiana who I coached. And so you'd start developing those relationships with the coaches involved down there. And, you know, once you develop those relationships, it doesn't matter where you are. It's all about need and demand, and, and we needed a quarterback. And obviously having a player like Lance available to us uh, gave us an opportunity, and we had some ties to the people that were affiliated with him. Coach, if you can tell us, when you say you go out on the national stage for Maryland, what do you say when you get to meet the kids and their parents that turns them on to being here? I mean, we had a great place here. I mean, this is the most important city in the world is located 15 minutes from our campus, Washington, D.C. So that's that's an easy sell. I mean, people fly from all over the world to come to this city. And the resources available to a, a student athlete here at the University of Maryland, a top 25 academic institution in a lot of different fields, uh, what is it not to like about this location in, in Maryland? But the biggest thing now is, you know, the facilities that – we're building and the investment that administration has made into not just a football program, but you look at how Route 1 has just blown up and, and it, was, it just amazes me to see Route 1 looking the way it looks with all the new dorms. I mean, we've got a great product to sell here and nationally when you get people on campus, they find it uh, a, a great situation as well. Is there something particular about the football that you sell in that package? I mean, obviously, we definitely sell the football part of it. You know, some of the success that the coaches on our staff has had at different places. You know, I'm fortunate that I spent time here at Maryland when we had the football part going really well in the 2001, 2002, 2003 era uh, when we kind of got it going. So I know what it looks like when this place is, uh, is, is hitting on all cylinders, and that's the vision I keep in the back of my head as we go out and recruit and build this thing. You have to leave yourself a little a little wiggle room. Um, you always save a little bit of money for a rainy day. So uh, I would say that we'll always try to leave some spaces there because there are, are opportunities to recruit some, some pretty good players that have the ability to come in and, and help you uh, right now. So we definitely took that into account as we uh, have moved forward with our numbers. Coach, I'm curious if you've heard from uh, Coach Saban since a couple of these kids on this list uh, had offers from Alabama. Well, he and I, I actually talked to him a couple of days ago, but I was mostly, uh, I'd sent him a text message and he doesn't return text, but I wanted to know when the, uh, the, uh, the Super Bowl was going on, when the Patriots, I, I sent them a text, do you kick it here? That was when uh, it was fourth and one, whether they should go for it or kick it. And he and I wound up talking about it the next day. He says you would, he would have kicked it, especially if you got a good kicker, which is obviously what the uh, Patriots did. But he didn't mention these kids who decided to come here. No, not at all. He, uh, we didn't talk recruiting. Didn't talk shop. Thank you very much.